Hello everyone and welcome to today's webcast, Boosting Your Brand. My name's Sarah Gonzalez, I'm from Redback Conferencing and thank you for joining us for today's very special event. We're joined by Samantha Riley and today she's going to talk to us about everything brand. She is a number one best-selling author, so I feel very privileged to be interviewing her today. How are you today? I'm very well, thanks for having me Sarah. Excellent, so thank you for joining us. Um, you're an entrepreneur, you're an author, you're a speaker, you're a marketer, so I'm really excited to get chatting about about everything that we've got to cover today. Can't wait. But first of all, when we talk about boosting your brand, are we talking about your personal brand or your business brand? How does this all come together? Okay, so when I first went into business um, earlier, like in my 20s, mm. um, I used to think that uh, branding was all about the logo, about the, the sign that went out the front, the colours, mm. everything like that. Um, and intuitively what I started to realise very early on was that People were coming to my business for me yep. because they wanted to get to know me. They wanted to like me and trust me. Um, so intuitively, I just learned very early that it's your personal brand that leverages the growth mm. of your actual business. So today we're talking about how to really build your personal brand so that people you know, do get to know you, like you and trust you. And then they come and they do business mm. with you. So it sort of all goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Absolutely. So let's get straight into it. Um, what did you want to start with today and what did you want to open with um, in terms of educating everyone online? Cool. Well, um, like I said, I um, noticed very early that it's your personal brand mm. that builds your business brand. So um, on the slide here, we're showing, you know, just in the last six months, I've, I've written a book. I've been featured in three other books, Channel 10, Sydney Morning Herald, lots and lots of podcasts, way, way more than that. And by people getting to know me, what I stand for, my values, that that helps people to know, yeah, we want to come and do business with you. We know what you stand for. Yeah. Excellent. You know, um, Simon Sinek says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, and it's it's so true. And especially, you know, in the age that we're in, everything's so prolific mm. um, on social media, yeah. um, and people want to feel like they really do know you now. Yeah. Um, their, their BS radars are turned yeah. up <laughs> really high. You know, we're having these thousands of marketing messages given to us every day mm. in our faces. Um and people don't want to see that anymore. They want to say, you know, do I like you? Yeah. Cool. So it's really about buying from a person as opposed to buying a product or something from a company. Absolutely. I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> So the three problems that I see um, from a lot of uh, people that, are, you know, entrepreneurs, especially like solo entrepreneurs, um, you know, personal trainers, people in the mm. health industries, coaches, um, it's like they feel like they're the world's best secret. Uh a lot of them I've noticed have got a really amazing story to share. Mm. They're, very, they're highly skilled. They've done lots of courses um, and they've got their, their core one-on-one -on -one clients, but mm. it's only a few of them. Um, and they're vanilla. You know, there's so many other people out there doing what we do. Mm. There's a gazillion people doing what I do, uh, but it's about, you know, not being the same as everyone else. Mm. What makes you stand out? Um and then, you know, when they're, when they're like that, they're overlooked. You're not top of mind because mm. you're not, you know, very interesting or you're, you're not, you know, the first person that yeah. people think about. So, um, yeah, but there is three opportunities. Yeah, so when we talk about opportunities, um, we're talking about a formula. Absolutely. And we spoke about this earlier. So yes. um, it's always easier when you can follow a formula. I Absolutely. think everyone can attest to that. Um, so what is the first step of this brand building formula? Okay. Can we speak about? Sure. So when we get it right, we have leverage. Yep. We stand out. Um, and, and we do have the opportunities. So the, the very first step is to create your authentic message. Yep. Um, this is something that I think authentic message is everyone's talking mm. about this right now. And I'm still not really sure that a lot of people are getting what authentic message mm. really means. So when you're authentic, you're genuine. You really get to know. Um, so you need to really know what you stand for. Um, you know, embrace that authenticity. I'm mm. a little bit quirky. A lot of, um, all of my, my, the people that follow me on social media know that I totally have a lot of coffee every morning. Mm. You know, they know that, that I like to have a glass of wine at night. And, 
it, while that might be a bit of a funny thing to talk about, it's actually really funny the way that works yeah. because I get tagged in all sorts of coffee and wine memes, yeah, yeah. which is great because I'm top of mind. Mm. Um, people know what I stand for. So how does that work then in an organisation? So we speak, we spoke um, earlier about business versus, versus personal brand. Yes. So if your business represents one thing, so yes. you work for an organisation yes. and as a brand they represent A, but as a person you represent a little bit more of B, how, do you, how does that work? Is it time to go or is, a way that, is there a way that it can work hand in hand? Wow, I've never been asked that question. Um, I think that that you would have to really feel into that. Mm. Um, you know, culture is a very important thing. Mm. So if your value set and your skill set and your story don't go hand in hand with that mm. organisation, then probably it's not a, you know, if that's really important to you, it's not a great place to stay mm. because the culture's all all wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, that authenticity is what, what story do you have that yeah. other people can relate to? What skills do you have? Um, what's your value set? Um, all, all the things, you know, what makes you excited? Mm. If you're not excited about what you're doing, then, yeah, I'll There's suggest, a real yeah, point. yeah, move on. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, so once you're clear on your authentic message and you know you've got that and it, you know, ties into your value system and everything like that, what do you, what do, you do then? How do you actually use it in your brand? And is it about just being on social media and then just claiming to the whole world what your message is? Um, how does that all work? Okay, so... Just, just stepping back for two seconds, mm. when you got your your message right, it's your message is heard by the right people. Mm. So that does flow over into the social media world yep. because um, when I'm truly, truly on brand, mm. is it like this whole plethora of people that are like, oh, we don't care what she's talking about. Mm. We don't dig what she's about. Her story means nothing to us. Mm. So they, it gives them the the um, the permission to go, we don't want to hear her, so they can move on and mm. go find um, someone else to listen to, yeah. or someone else that can help solve their problem. Um, so what's really great about getting your story right and that authentic message is that you get, you know, that laser focus niche. Um, people are leaning in for more to hear it and you're attracting the right kind of clients, mm. the, the clients that, that you can help the most and that, that you're excited to work with. Mm. Okay, so we've got that message. We we know what our target market is, and we yes. know how to get it out there. Yep. What are, you just mentioned social media, and this is something I'm interested in because I think a lot of people either are for social media and everything's about social media, yes. but I think they maybe do a few different social media sites and they don't do them well. They try and be all things to yes. all people. Yes. Or then you've got people on the other side of the spectrum who don't actually want to go down that path and they think it's a waste of time, whether it's for, um, as a marketer for Redback, I use social media yep. as well and that's part of the branding exercises yes. that we do. But do you need to use it as part of your brand? Like, yeah, that? so I get asked that a lot. Do we, like, as a business owner, do we need to be on social media? Um, and this is really important because this is where you're going to connect with your target market. Yeah. Um, so when business owners say to me, do I need to be on social media? I say, well, it, it's simple. Are your cl your prospective clients or, or customers mm. on social media? If that's where they're hanging, yep. then that's, yeah, that's where you need to be. Um, but but you don't need to be all things to all people, like you say. Um, for, uh, for example, uh, a, a, a mum that maybe wants the services of a, a personal trainer or mm. a boot camp, that, that uh, personal trainer wasting their time on Twitter probably yeah. isn't the best place to be. But hanging out on Facebook and Instagram to connect with those, mm. with those people is, is where to hang out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and this all plays in with connecting to your target market. Absolutely. Can we speak a little bit more about that, about how we should do it and how we should do it properly? Yeah, so connecting with your target market, I suggest like you, you want to connect with them deeply. Mm. So it's not just about this is who I am, it's really getting um, deep connection with your, with your clients. Um, and I love that quote by Johnny Depp, I mm. think it's really fantastic. Um, so when you know exactly who that niche is that you're speaking to, it's it's a very narrow niche, but you can go very deep. You know, you get to be able to connect with them on a deep mm. level and, and become a resource to them. So there's uh, three different problems that your that your target market's going to have. There's going to be known problems and spoken problems. Mm -hmm. So they're the problems that they know about and the problems that they speak about. It's okay to speak about, oh, you know... Um, 
uh, re- you know, just had a really crappy day with, with a client or whatever. Mm. So, you know, they're okay to speak about it. Then you've got your known problems and unspoken problems. And they're the kind of problems that people are a little bit ashamed about. So it might be not being able to pay the bills. They mm-hmm. know they've got the problems. They don't speak about them. Um, and then those clients have also got unknown and unspoken problems. And they're problems that they don't even understand that they've got. Mm. So when you connect really deeply with your target market and you can talk about the problems they don't even know that they have and um, become a resource and Mm. start to add value to their lives and start to educate them, you'll be able to connect really Mm. deeply because it'll be like you're... you're, uh, you know, you've got a crystal ball. They'll be like, how did you know that? Yeah. yeah. And how? Do, what sort of steps can we then take to understand our target market better? How do we uncover that information? Um, how do we go out there and, um, you know, find without being too intrusive, if yeah. you like? Yeah. It's just connecting, you know, establish trust. Mm. Um Make the space safe for Mm. them to talk about their problems. So when you're truly authentic, people are okay to tell you their problems. When you're you're that show person that people Mm. can't talk to, they don't want to share that kind of information. So a lot of times I'll post a status, for example, on Facebook and I'll get personal messages coming through from people Mm. going, oh, wow, like we didn't even know that we had that problem. Thank you so much for helping us feel safe to share that. Um... So, yeah, establish that trust because, you know, your brand is about what people say about you when you're not in the room. Mm. So, you know, um, yeah, Um, own your niche. Be very, you know, know, like I said before, go really deep with Mm. them, really understand everything that there is about about those people and about the topic that you're talking about. Now, um, you have been business in business for a long time. We spoke about that earlier. I'm interested to learn about the changing landscape. So we're talking about social media and knowing your customers. And I know that um, in the past, especially in the last five to ten years, there's been a lot of talk about how as marketers especially, we definitely do know who we're talking to now. Yes. And we definitely do have so many different ways and more ways to connect. What have you seen change over the past 20 years oh or so? Goodness. Like, what are you, you know, and are people actually adopting to what you're talking about now? Or do you feel like we've still got some room to go? And what are people doing wrong? Yeah, oh, that's such a huge question. In mm. 20 years, so much has changed. Mm. We, you know, our first accounting system was. <laughs> on a piece of paper, yeah. like how old school is that? You know, there, there was no email. Um, and when social media first came out, I, I was a very early adopter with mm. Facebook. Um, I was on it like right from the beginning because I could see that there was such an opportunity. Um, so I, I see that your question is about, you know, who's adopting it? And I, I see two very different camps. Mm. I see um, the older uh, people that have been in business, maybe for as long as I have, are saying, you know, well, we've been in business for 20 years mm. and it's been working, so maybe, you know, let's not get into social media. We don't really understand it. You know, we'll just keep going mm. the way we're going. But the problem there is that they might be thinking that, but the people that they need to sell to, that's where they're hanging out on social media. So if you don't keep up with the times, I think in the next, I'm already seeing, you know, some of these people going through mm. some issues now. Um, and in the over the next few years, I think that their business is going to decline at a rapid rate mm. um, because Gen Y, this is the, uh, is it Gen Z now? They, this Gen is there. the first generation of children that, um, have grown up their whole life with social media and e-commerce. Yep. So we don't need to educate them and teach them like Gen X, Gen mm. Y. They are totally. Uh, they, they don't need to be educated. They're just going to be going straight onto mm. the onto the web and doing what they need to do. Um, and then there's this other camp of uh, younger generation people that are on social media, and I think they're not understanding maybe in the same way as the the sort of the older style business owners Mm. about creating trust about getting to know their clients they're just more about marketing yeah selling um and and people don't want to hear that message yeah people want to be heard they want to be listened to Mm. they want to connect yeah excellent um before we start talking about the people part of it because i'm interested in that um i just want to let everyone know online um if you do have any questions please type them through i've got an ipad here there you can see it (laughs) um any questions that you ask will actually come through to here love to hear your thoughts on anything that you want to ask sam and we can get through to the quest our q a session or something relevant to your business and your brand or something like that we can also chat about so please feel free to type any questions in there um and then also um there's a survey on the right hand side as well if you want to complete as we go along now 
We've spoken about connecting to your target market, which yes. is absolutely crucial, and yes. I do get that. But what about other ways that we can connect with people? Um, I think there's, you know, with social media, there does come, okay, now are we actually talking to people or how do we actually have real conversations because really, everyone's behind a screen? So. I'm really, really glad that you spoke about this because yeah. there, there is so this, so this is only about the beginning of the connection phase okay. and social media is only one of these areas. Yes. Um, email, uh, emailing, I was going to say email marketing, but let's just take the marketing yeah, part off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, using email, um, your website, um, you know, a lot of this at the beginning stage is, is a lot online, but what we're doing is we're starting to prepare to be able to take that relationship offline as, mm. as soon as possible. Um, you know, we don't want to keep chatting to people on Facebook all day. Mm. We do want to take it offline and turn these leads into clients that you're speaking with and mm. helping. Yeah. So um, just one step further then, um, besides the online environment, what about networking and having discussions with real people? Yep. How important is that for your personal brand? I find that a lot of people, um, especially who are at the same stage in their career as myself, they haven't even heard of networking. No a way. Lot of, yeah, because they're like, oh, you know, that's something that was done a long time ago yep. before we had the online connections. Yes. Yep. Where, how important do you see networking events and stuff like that for your personal brand? I believe it's really, really important mm. because it's one thing to have who we are um, up on Facebook, on mm. Twitter, on Instagram. Um, and even when you are connecting authentically, there's mm. still that, you know, yeah. there's still that shiny, this is the way it is. Um, and, you know, we've spoken on the phone, mm. we've, we've emailed, but, yep. but meeting in person is just so much different. You get the vibe of someone, you see what they're really like, you see, you see their eyes sparkle when they're yeah. talking about the right thing. Yep. So, yeah, getting, I call it getting out of the cave. Yeah. And would that also go for um, getting to know other people in your industry? How else can we go beyond that? Yeah. And like, for example, yourself, how do you go out and how do you network and how do you build your personal brand and get yeah. out there, out of yeah. the cave? Yeah, it is getting out of the cave. It's it's who are the influencers in my industry? Yep. Who are the people that I'm noticing that a lot of the people that I connect with, who are they connected mm -hmm. with? Um, it's about setting the goal of where I want to be yep. and working back backwards, reverse engineering that process. Okay, so if I want to be connected with, you know, someone in the, in the US, for example, you know, because mm. we are in a global economy now, not in a, in a local economy. If I want to connect with someone there, who are the people that are connected with that person so that I can start to to work out that process going forward. Um, as for collaborations, mm. I talk about that's a whole, you know, that's my fourth step in the formula because um, it is very important. Mm. But just, you know, in the connection phase, using social media, getting to know people, have, you know, beginning to have that chat, mm. definitely networking, you know, um, especially with LinkedIn, a lot of people talk about connecting, um, collecting contacts mm. where I say we'll connect and then like coffee yeah. or chat or whatever it is, you know, Do something. what's a number on a screen? Mm. It's nothing. Yeah. And I think it's important how you say you need to set your end goal and then work backwards because I think a lot of people even turn up to events or something and they don't know why they're there. They have yeah. no, okay, this is what I want to achieve by the yes. time I leave. Yes. And just being there and, you you know, being in networking events or something before and people are just looking around, just, you know, what do I do yeah. sort yeah. of thing. So it really yeah. is about knowing what you want to achieve and get out of that, isn't it? Yeah. In, in that, though... Um, Okay, so if I was going to a networking event and, and I knew that I wanted to achieve connecting with um, with photographers, for example, mm. for, for my own brand or as a referral partner, I'm, it's okay to know that that's who I want to connect with. It's not okay to go in there and start selling at a yep. networking event. Mm -hmm. I think a networking event is all about uh, listening, yep. connecting, asking questions. You know, I, I think the really the most interesting people that I've met, when you leave, you're almost like, I don't think they even hardly said a word. They actually were more interested in yeah. listening to me. So I'm always, you know, asking questions and as learning as much as I can about mm. that person. Yeah. So, yeah, listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Okay, um, before we go on to the product side of things, um, we do have a question from Sanjay. So in your opinion, what's the difference between brand and positioning? Uh, brand is... Oh, I don't... <sighs> Wow, brand and positioning, I almost feel like they're the same. Mm. Um, brand is your message, but it's also how that, um, you know, I did say before branding is about 
uh, what people say when you're not in the room. Mm. But it's also, um, you know, how do your visuals look? Are they all the same? You know, that the images that you use on social media, your, your place cards, the images that you use on mm. your blogs, um, your website, your logo, um, the typeface that you use, the colours, all of that comes into your branding. Um, your The images, um, you know, your headshots, very important mm. to make sure that they're they're getting the message across that this is this is who I am. Yep. Um, you know, I'm a very strong personality type. Mm. So if my uh, branding images were, you know, sitting in a in a field with flowers, it's just like <laughs> it would scare people when they met me because I'm so full on. I'd I be like, that would oh. scare me if I saw anyone do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay for a natural path. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so th- th- that is your branding, and it's how those images and and the words come together. Mm. Um, and the positioning, that's uh, more w- where you're perceived in the marketplace. Mm. You know, who are you connected with? Um, you know, are, are you a published author? Are you a speaker? Um, you know, so w- what status are you going mm. up to? You know, are you a celebrity? Are you getting $100,000 to go and speak? Mm. So I hope that answered that question. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, now, just getting back to the formula, yes. what are we talking about now in here? Well, let's have a look. So third, this is where we were head- where you were heading before. Once you've actually done the original connection, yep. it's about collaborating in the right circles. And these collaborations can come in lots of different forms. Um, you know, you are the average of the five people you spend the most mm. time with, so it's really important that um, I talk about your, your inner circle, which is sort of your five closest yep. friends. They're the people that you that you talk to when things aren't going right. You don't need the whole world to know, but, yes. you know, you might need to pick up the phone and have a bit of a meltdown at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. That's your inner circle. Then, then there's... Um, uh, I can't even remember what I call it. It's not outer circle, but, the, you know, it's the other business people mm. that you connect with. Um, and then uh, there's also, you know, um, the, your clients. So, you, like, you, you need to get out of the cave, get mm. out and about the networking events, like you said. Where I've actually um, found most of my collaborations is actually at um, masterminds and business conferences um, and expos. Um, and I think I've been thinking about this just recently. I think it's because the people that go into those kinds of things are also in a phase like me where they want to grow, they mm. want to be better, they want to learn more. Um, and they're the people that are sort of in the same mindset mm. as, as me. So they're great people to um, to do collaborations with. So whether that's a strategic alliance or a JV or a partnership, however you want to say it, you know, um, referral partners or people that can help you do marketing campaigns mm. together. Um, that's really important. Okay. Um, now, we're talking about opportunities. Yes. So this is exciting because um, we were speaking about this before, how opportunities do arise, how do you go with it, what, how do you know what opportunity to take, how yes. do you want to actually attract that opportunity. So how does this all tie into our personal brand? Okay. So what I love about uh, people call them different things, so mm. joint ventures, strategic alliances, whatever we call them, what's really exciting about this is that you can use your um, other people to help grow each other's business. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's give you an example. So there could be um, a personal trainer that is selling a 12-week boot camp challenge. So, you know, she might be able to say, okay, well, who do I know that that I can speak with to help um, give me or give me leads that might need my services? Mm. So they might want to speak to... um, uh, a a jeweler that specializes in engagement rings Mm because generally brides that are getting married, they want to lose weight quickly. Mm -hmm. Or they might want to go and um, speak with travel agents that that specialize in cruising, you know, if I'm going on a cruise, I generally want to make sure I can put the bikini on. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, and and how are we going to attract opportunities to help leverage each other's business? Where the personal brand is really important is to do those kind of ventures. You need to really align personally mm. because someone else is putting their brand on the table. They don't want it muddied, I guess, as a word. They want, you know, if I've got someone else selling my brand, mm. I want to make sure that our values align and that that we've got the same sort of um, ideas of, of, Mm. you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think that could work on a number of different levels as well. Um, a lot of people out there um, with sponsorship opportunities yes. so as an organisation, as a brand, do you align with the same sort of values and beliefs and do you want to be asso- – it's all about association, isn't it, and Absolutely. who you wish to be associated with. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And um, on that, that sponsorship, so um, I get 
I, I talk a lot with my clients about contribution. Mm. Um, I think contribution is a really, really important part of business. Yep. Um, and it's about, again, attracting the right kind of people that align with your business. So, you know, I need to know exactly what my legacy is, what my purpose is, because mm. then the collaborations that I do um, in, in that arena will align with my message. Okay, great. Um, now let's move on to the fourth step sure. in the formula. So this is where we talk about constructing an online product. Yes. So um, I get this because I do work in the online environment. Um, but for what about what about for people out there um, who don't necessarily have an online product or it's more yes. like a one-to-one -one communication tool when they are working, whether you're an accountant or something like that? Yes. How does this all come into play? Yeah. Okay. So this is like I said before, we've got to start, um, especially um, in retail or in a, in a, um, a business where they do one-on-one, -on -one, exactly like you said, like accounting, a lot of people can't, don't think they've got something to sell, mm. where in actual fact they do. Think about the questions that you get asked every day from your clients mm. because if you're getting asked that, that question every day by, by people, mm. there's going to be how many million people in the world that have got the same question. Mm. So the great way to start is... What questions am I getting asked? Mm -hmm. um, that's how the brand builder formula was born. I was getting asked these questions every day, all the time. Mm. And that's when I could start to see the progression. Just type it into Google and see what comes up first. Yeah. <laughs> and Amazon, uh, Amazon's another really good place to do oh, your okay. research as well. Yeah. Mm, interesting. So once you've um, established your brand, what can you actually do to, do to build your influence or take it to the next level? Once you've built your brand? Yeah, so in your own, you know, you've done all these things, you're going out to these networking events, you know what you stand for, you, you've got this product, you know where you want to play yes. almost. What do you do then to influence it um, or really take it to the next level and really stand out so you're not that vanilla type of person? Okay, so that's when we're talking about communicating in a mm. leveraged way. Okay. So we're really taking it to the next level. Um, you know, you've got a message that, you know can change the world. Mm -hmm. So instead of keeping it a secret, share it with yep. the world. Um, once we're doing that, uh, sharing it with so many more people, it does establish your credibility because you're known worldwide. Mm. Um, it amplifies your message um, and it, it positions your influence, like you said. So there's many ways that we can do that. Um, it could be writing a book. So once you're a, a published author in your niche, mm -hmm. of course, you're, people know that you know what you're talking about. Um, it could be speaking on stage because there might be many people that are listening. Um, webinars like we're doing mm. today is a fabulous way because I can share my message once and yes. however many people are listening, um, you know, they're all hearing the message mm. so that the ripple effects are a lot, a lot greater. Okay, great. Um, now, we were talking just before and you did mention something and I don't really like to go to the negative, but I think in this situation um, it's going to be quite useful for a lot of people online. Businesses fail and yes. especially a lot of startup businesses um, or even the business that you're in now and you're employed in might actually fail. Now, you're saying there's three reasons why businesses fail. Yes. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Um, I don't like talking about negatives either, yeah. but it's a fact of life. You um, have to, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and it, it really upsets me when businesses do fail because, you know, I know that people put everything into mm. their businesses. Um, so the first one is, is trying to do it alone. So whether that's not having your inner circle to talk to, um, whether it's you sitting at home and trying to do all of the admin mm. and the graphic design and writing blogs and looking after your clients and, 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 mm. and it goes on. So, uh, you know, you do need, you do need help. You know, if you can walk up a mountain on your own, it's mm. not a very big mountain. So, um, as, as people with an amazing message to share, we want to share that in a big way. Mm. So it's, that's a big mountain. We need to make sure that we've got a team around us. Um, the second um, problem that I see is people not being held accountable. Mm. So they set a goal um, and they're in their little cave or working from home and no one else knows that goal and no one else is helping them to overcome the fear of the next thing that needs mm. to be done. You know, they might need to do a webinar or a Facebook Live and they're just like, oh, I'm just too scared to do it. So they don't do it. There's no one holding them accountable mm. to say, no, come on, you have to do this. Um, and the third thing is not having a clear plan. Um, so it's not not knowing, you know, what's your three-year goals? What's your 12-month mm. goals? And, and, again, reverse engineering it, breaking it down. What's your 90-day your plan? And what needs to happen this week mm. to get you closer to that plan? 
how often do you see this happen? People go into the, like, I know it's probably a really broad question, but, and, you know, how, can you go back? If you, maybe you've got one of these not in place or something like that, can you actually take a step back and go, okay, well, all three of them need to not happen in order for me to fail? How does that work with them? Yeah, of course, at any time you can go, uh, be vulnerable and mm. go, you know what, that is me, yep. you know, oh, my goodness, let me think about that goal that I have to do, you know, A, mm. B, C in my business and no one's actually, you know, I'm afraid and, and I don't want to do it um, or whatever it is, you know, at any time that can change. Yep. Um, you can be you know, sitting down, writing that plan, being accountable can change at any time. Definitely. We've got some questions coming through, um, so I just want to get to those. So Amanda has asked, what are your thoughts on LinkedIn and using discussion groups to create brand awareness and personal brand? Perfect. <laughs> I love LinkedIn. It's one of my favourite platforms um, and it is an amazing platform mm. to educate a group of people with what you do. So, um, Amanda, I think it's the perfect place to be hanging out. In terms of discussion groups, because I have been part of them in the past and I know a lot of people say they do work and a lot of people say, oh, they actually just bombard me with yes. a lot of information. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Because I know if you are part of a discussion group, sometimes you do get emailed, a lot of that stuff coming yes. through. What are, your, um, what are your tips on creating groups within there and making sure that you're not just yeah. annoying people? Yeah, I think that it's definitely a personal thing because um, in, in different industries, people are going to react differently. Um, I don't actually get into the discussion groups much because – like you said, I mm. did find that I was getting bombarded with um, with a lot of messages that that or, or topics that weren't even on topic for me. Yeah. Um, so be very aware of of the discussions that you're having, and if you're in an industry where um, it works perfectly for you, then go for it. Mm. Yeah, excellent. Um, so in terms of the formula, um, while we've got before we get to these questions, can we just give a broad overview just of the four steps and how people can actually apply them? I, oh, the five steps of five. The, sorry, yeah. yes, okay, the sorry. five steps of yes. the brand builder formula. Yes. So, um, so going back, the first one is to create your authentic message. It's yep. a very genuine message. You know, what's the skills and the story? You know, I've never met anyone that doesn't have a really interesting story. Mm. So share it. People love. Marketing is actually storytelling if it's done well. Yep. The second, the second step is to connect, uh, connect deeply with your mm. target market. Uh, the third step was um, to collaborate, so to get out of the cave, um, work with people, get to know them very well, um, create joint ventures with them, um, create events, you, mm. whatever it is. Um, then it's about constructing your online product so that you can take your uh, business from a one-to-one -one model to a one-to-many model or to take it from a global uh, sorry, a local to a global mm. model. Um, and the last step is to um, to leverage that. Um, I can't even remember what the last one was. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got some questions now. Yes. So it's great we've got an overview of the brand builder. Um, but for those of you online who do need to go, thank you so much for attending. We will actually be sending you a copy of the recording and slides within 48 hours, a PDF. Um, however, if you do want to stay on for questions, please stay on. Um, please also take note of the feedback survey. Um, and if you would like to hear about some more information and sign up to the blogs um, or any sort of information from yourself, yes. there's an opt-in in that survey as well. Um, now, we're going to go to some questions now because we do have a lot coming through. So we'll try and get through as much as we can. Um, so, Greg, so you mentioned uh, speaking opportunities and presenting yes. at conferences. Yes. How do you get about making yourself be part of this? Okay. So so when you re I suggest that you do some research into whatever industry that that you're in, what are the events that are coming up, um, you know, what are the expos or the conferences, um, who are the people that are running these events, um, and I connect with them mostly on LinkedIn um, and also on Facebook and mm -hmm. just open up the, the, uh, the conversation and, and I tell them straight out, mm. this is what I want, this, yeah. is what, um, this is what I value, I can give you, yep. this is what I can offer. Um, be ve sort of start to think about what are the, the major topics that you can cover off yep. that you're an expert in because then when, when you do get those opportunities to come, you know exactly what it is that your mm. offering is. Excellent. Yeah. Um, hope that answered your question, Greg. So from Pauline. So when it comes to networking, do you have any recommendations on questions that you should ask people? Oh, I 
don't. I, I don't. When I connect with people, I prefer to just feel into the moment because I feel that that is really, you know, when we're talking about being authentic and being genuine, um, then, you know, I, I think it's a bit icky to always be asking the same questions. Mm. People... I think people intuitively pick that up and imagine if you bumped into them at another time and you forgot and you asked the same <laughs> set of questions, it could get a bit yeah. a bit funny. So, um, yeah, I can't, I guess a, a networking expert would probably mm. be better to, to um, ask that question because um, my strategy is random, just yeah. going with whatever feels right at the time. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> um, so, Sophie, so this is going back to when we spoke about creating your authentic message. Yes. What if you are creating your authentic message? However, there are other people that have the same message as you. No one's going to have the same message. When okay. you get really into your story, what are the things that have happened to you in your life mm. that you can use that story to help other people? No one else has got the same story as you. So tap into that um, and your value set is going to be different um, to someone else's value mm. set. Two people aren't going to have the same, you know, they might have the same values but their story is going to be different. Um, so really tap into the story, the experiences you've had, the skills you've had um, and think about how you can use those stories to help others. So it's really about digging deep, isn't it's it? And definitely. not being scared to share so much. It that is. You... That's exactly what it is. You know, um, if your story is the same, it means that you haven't kind of cracked in at, like deep mm. enough. You know, it's very shallow still. So so, um, uh, you know, be vulnerable. Like Brene Brown is, is fantastic at this when she says, you know, you have to be vulnerable to be courageous. Mm. Um, and it's I didn't realise that my story had been shallow for a while and when I really shared some of the, the things that had happened to me, that's when I created much deeper connections and mm. people going, oh, wow. Yep. You know, that, it's that that people connect Having with. Having that personal thing Absolutely. that people can resonate with. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, that brings us to the end. Um, if anyone has any further questions, they can speak to you. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Absolutely. Um, so we'll put your contact details up um, on the slide. We'll just move that forward. Uh, um, let's go. It's gone. Bye. <laughs> along. Oops. There, there we go. Sorry to the guys at the back there for that. <laughs> So if you want to join um, Samantha on her journey um, and get to know her a little bit more, um, understand how you can help your organisation or your business or whatever you're into at the moment. Um, but before we leave, um, closing comments, if you could have people walk away with one thing today, what would be the big thing that you really want them to take away and apply? Um, I think the greatest thing that I want them to really understand is the storytelling mm. because it's the story, your story that people will connect to and how does that story go across everything you do. It's infused into the way you speak, the way you write on your blog, mm. the way you connect with people, the images. Um, when you really truly dig deep and you yep. know exactly what that is and that gets infused into everything you do, that's when you will create really deep connections and lasting um you know, business contacts, leads, a nice solid business. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone online. It's been great. Thank you for joining us once again for the Business Skills Series. Like I said, keep an eye out for the recording and you have, if you have any further questions or perhaps you know a speaker who would like to present, feel free to contact us at Redback Conferencing. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.